I believe we're all excited um, to, you know, learn a little bit about the, our guest speaker today. So um, I haven't had the pleasure of meeting him, but I just um, read a little about him and it's an absolute pleasure to be the one introducing him today. Um, Mr. Abali Jensen is a man that is multi-talented, an international speaker, a writer, a mentor. He wears many hats and is a builder of people, vision and talent. He happens to be the CEO of um, Lightfield um, um, House International, which happens to be a talent profiling organization. He has been the president of Achievers um, International, which helps to um, raise a community of young professionals that collaborate, share resources, and um, to help raise the next generation of leaders in Africa. Today we have him in our midst and we're very excited to learn from a man that has a wealth of knowledge. He's written the book, he's the author of Unleashed and it's an, an extraordinary book that focuses on unlocking the next generation. You can only imagine how um, packed the um, time with him is going to be today. So I would like for you to prepare your mind, to prepare your heart, to listen. And most importantly, the best part is after you have listened, you're going to have a session where you're going to be able to ask him practical questions, areas where you struggle with. He has this knowledge. He has the experience and is, is here to help us clear the doubts in our mind, help us with direction. And this is a, 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 an opportunity that you should not miss. So um, with um, I'm with very high expectation and um, I'm very delighted to welcome you, Mr. Um, Johnson Abali, to the program today. Um, please take the stage now, sir, and um, we're looking forward to hearing a lot from you. Good morning, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. All right. Um, I'm super excited to be here and having this conversation with us today. I want to thank uh, Mr. Koye Joe for the incredible vision in putting comfort together. And I am hoping that we are going to have uh, an incredible time, hopefully. Um, <clears throat> okay, guys. Um, I want to welcome everybody here. Um, I see that a lot of friends have joined in. Thank you for coming in, Akin Komi, uh, uh, Zaya Joseph, Nsaka Joseph, Jeremiah, Jesse Lewis, um, John Jato from Australia. I want to thank you for being a part of the session and everybody else who is coming in to join us. I am hoping that um, we're going to have a wonderful time. Um, today's conversation is interesting. Uh, I'm going to try to debunk a few things, uh, make some probably earth shattering statement about vision that some of us will have to revisit in the course of our work here. Um, what is vision? Vision is not what you think you want. Vision is always about what you want to become. And I think this is where a lot of people get it wrong. I've seen quite a number of folks who uh, go on to say that a vision is what they are looking to achieve within a particular frame of time. Maybe at the end of the year, they want to achieve something. That's not a vision. That's a goal or a mission, if you like, not vision. And because of this slight misunderstanding, a lot of people get in these old concepts very wrong. And that is why they lose steam in the middle of the, of the journey. They start off something and before you know, they eventually shut it down. Because for some reason, they are no longer interested or they find something more engaging or stuff like that. And then it's over. What is vision? Now, it's a vision. And then I, I, I would like to break down the word strategic because it says strategic master plan. Okay, I think I should start with strategic and then come to vision. I think you get it that way. Now, when you say something is strategic, it refers 
So what's your ultimate goal is? The secret plan that you have that only you know about and others don't. i give you an example. An MTN carries out a social empowerment project, maybe one of the CSRs, and they say they want to give free eyeglasses and free eye tests to uh, people in a certain community. Now, that's a project that has objectives. Now, the objective of that project may be, we want to be able to do free eye tests and give glasses to a minimum of 5,000 people in X, Y, and Z communities. All right, this is part of our initiative to give back to the community and to support people. And that's the objective of the project. But that is not the strategic objective of the project. Now, the strategic objective of that project would be that if they are able to achieve that objective of putting thousands, of providing thousands of support for all of these um, people in that community, the strategic objective is that that support will provide tremendous amount of PR value that will help MTN soft land some new product lines into that market. That's the strategic objective. The objective you are sold is that we are in your community to give you support and help you achieve eyesight. Everybody loves that. Everybody loves the cheerful giver, right? <laughs> but at the back end, the strategic leadership, that's where the word comes in now, are those who sit back and try to figure out how the CSR objective will feed into the ultimate goal, the strategic goal of providing shareholders value. And that is why when you go to some of these companies and you make a proposal to them, sir, I know you guys are interested in education, you're interested in community development, you're interested in women and girls' education, and so on and so forth. Where I guess empowerment is that we have this stuff we want to do. And then it was okay, you drop your proposal, we get back to you. What is going on really is that they are going to the back end to find out how any of these things you're talking about feed into the strategic objective of the company, because this is not a Santa Claus organization. This is an organization that needs to pay bills. Right? And so if they cannot factor in what you are trying to achieve with what their own strategic objectives are, end of story, it's gone. They will say, well, uh, you're likely to hear one of two things. Well, uh, people are reviewing it and uh, we might get back to you in due course. Or you hear something like, well, um, our team actually have something really similar. Uh, we've already had it in the works for some time. So we think that there might be a bit of conflict of interest if we push on with this. So uh, we're really afraid we will not be able to take this on at this time. Very nice way to say no, is it? Now, the point is this. The word strategic is something a lot of people do not understand. So they just take action and there is no strategic outcome. And that is where fundamentally people from another part of the world, the ones we call those from the Western Hemisphere, happen to seem to be smarter than those of us from the North because they always get their strategic objectives right. Always. Okay? Uh, those of us here, the moment we have defined objectives, especially around, around a short-term aspiration, that's end. There's nothing strategic about it. In fact, people throw around the word strategic, 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 without even understanding what it means. So when you say something is a strategic operation, it means it is an operation that is going to achieve far more than what you're getting on face value. All right? So you will not only understand that uh, you're not achieving, that even if you achieve the goal, it's very possible you didn't achieve the strategic goal. And so somebody will tell you at the back office that no, we didn't do enough. And they say, oh, what, what do you mean we didn't do enough? A lot of people showed up. No, that's not the point. The point is there's a strategic goal we are hoping to achieve. For instance, if somebody says that we are coming to invade Iraq because we suspect that there is uh, weapons of mass destruction at play, that's objective of the assault. But do you know what a strategic objective is? I'm sure by now you can start to figure that out. Right? Uh, so the strategic objective is always in those kinds of files 
the label confidential, high secret. The other side, I'm saying, um, and you, you discover that you cannot unpack it except you have a certified a particular security uh, grade to be able to have access to that kind of information. That's what the strategic ideas are. Okay, so until we understand what strategic means, we will not be able to truly leverage some of the things that we are talking about. So if you say the strategic master plan, this term master plan cannot be the goals or the objective. It's got to be something much deeper. And that is where the word vision comes in. All right? Because vision is always tied around the strategic plan or the strategic outcome. The thing you are hoping to truly achieve in the end. Apart from all of that. Now, let me let me break this further down for you. If somebody has a vision that he wants to become uh, an Olympian with a gold medal in a 100 meters race, all right, that's his vision. That's a strategic vision. All right. Now, to achieve the strategic vision, he would need to do the numbers, work out the mathematics. Uh, what is that? If you want to hold that title, it simply means you have to outrun people like us in both. So outrun us in both, it simply means that you have to retrain your body to be able to complete eight steps per second. If you can achieve eight steps per second, then you'll be able to hit the goal. Now, achieving eight steps per second has now become your worst objective. It is around that objective that you now build your goals, all right? And then you now have goals that say, I will be doing three hours of workout every single morning, all right? Why? Because you are trying to achieve the objective of what? Eight hours, I mean, eight steps per second. That's the objective. So the goal that come out of the objective would be, I would be doing. So your goal, and everybody wakes up in the morning and see that you are up at four where everybody else is sleeping. And then you continue a certain routine and regimen till seven in the morning. And you do that consistently every single day. Why? Because that's the goal. The goal is to do what? Achieve three hours of work. The goal is something that builds on into your daily habits. All right? And then when you look at the daily habits, cumulatively, they help you achieve a, an objective. Or if you like, you can use another term for objective. This thing I call a mission. And the mission would be that you're trying to achieve eight steps per second. But all of this will mean nothing if there is no strategic objective, which is, in this case, the vision. I want to be an Olympian in the next Olympic gold medal, 100 level. You see, that's exactly how it works. So people who do not understand it in this order, tweak the order, and then they discover that it not and not achieving the kind of goals that they want to achieve. Now, let me say a few things to you here. Now, quickly, vision. Vision is never about what you want to achieve. Please pay attention now. Those are your goals. Those are your missions. Probably those are your objectives. Vision is always about who you want to become. Always. 24-7, all the time. Vision. It's always about who you want to become. If you miss that conversation, you have missed a lot. Look, I've seen people who start out to do certain things, and then they realize that after a while, they fizzle out. They lose steam in the middle of the stream. And the reason for that is because they don't feel excited or energized to continue to run after those things that they set out in the beginning to do. Why? Because there's no vision. What they had was ambition. And I think some people mistake those two. Ambition is not vision. Not. Never has been, never will be. Let me tell you the difference then. Now, if I say that by December of 2022, I want to make a hundred million naira, that is an ambition. That is not a vision. Can't be a vision of that. If I say, I repeat again, now, by December 2022, I want to make a hundred million. That is an ambition. Okay? And guess what? There are many ways you can make the hundred million. There are those who rob a bank and then they hope to get it. They just want to scam people, all kinds of things. But that's never a vision. Now, see what a vision sounds like. When I say by December 2022, 
I want to evolve to become the kind of person that attracts a hundred million. That's a vision. It is always about what you want to become. Because you see, it is that vision of what you want to become that puts you on a path of evolution. So you continue to grow and expand and grow and expand until you become the kind of person that attracts that money. Because people need to understand you do not attract what you want. You attract who you are. So vision is about evolving into the kind of person to whom all of these things come to easily. Rather than trying to chase after the money, chase after the evolution, become the kind of man that the money will chase. That is the vision. So when that becomes the vision that you seek for your life, you now realize that everything else falls into place. It becomes easy for you to make decisions. It's easy for you to make choices. It directs what you read. You see that you're always attending conferences like this. Why? Because they impact, they expand the vision of what's possible in your life. And then they put you in a place where you are always looking forward to take advantage for growth. Why? People are wondering, why are you always attend these conferences? Because your vision is to evolve, to become a certain, there's, a, there's an intellectual and spiritual and mental profile that you are trying to hit. Because you know that when you get to that space, if you walk into any environment, you can transform it because things that answer to what you want, they answer to who you are, is the way things are. Let me give you an example. You know, we can be, we can be um, on the same earth, but we can actually be in this different world. All right. Uh, allow me to make a biblical allusion to this. Uh, you remember the story of the plague in Egypt. There was a certain time God released darkness into the land of Egypt. And when the God into and uh, when darkness wrapped the land, the land around, what happened? There was a small city in Egypt called Goshen. Goshen was in the light. The whole of Egypt in the dark. Goshen in the light, the same earth, different world. It's amazing. Now, you see some people who step into an environment where nothing had worked for the people there ever. But as soon as they step into the place, for some reason, the place starts to respond. They start to achieve a whole lot of um, incredible experiences and feeling and, you know, getting results that never thought were possible. And then you're wondering how. We've been here 20 years. We didn't achieve anything. I mean, this guy just came two years ago. And is he using something? The environment is responding to who the guy is. The rest of you are responding to what the environment has to offer. That is the difference. Look, I don't understand this. That's the way everything changes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Vision is all about the kind of person you can evolve into. And that's what makes it strategic. That's what makes it a master plan. So the master plan is about your own personal evolution. All right, I have sheer power. Is it the sheer power of your insight and intelligence and capacity is what changes everything else on the inside, on the outside. It's the truth. Uh, another biblical illusion. Uh, there was a, um, a time that Isaac did, did some work around the same environments where the Philistines were, and uh, we're told that the Philistines envied him because for some reason he was prospering when they had famine. They didn't understand how could anybody do well in such an impossible economy, <laughs> all right? And so they attacked him. And then they said, maybe it's the wells that he built. If we hijacked those wells, maybe we can reproduce what he's reproducing. They missed the point. They missed the point. They thought that the result that they were seeing was the, was the outcome of the entire external environment. They didn't realize that it was the internal environment on the inside that is actually shaping everything else on the outside. And so when they took away his wells, the gentleman did not even bother to fight over land materials. He just went over there, built new wells, became great, and we're told that he went on to become even greater. Greater than he was before. Why? Because all the things that he was doing was not coming from everything on the external they were all coming from something on the internal and that is where all of this that's the matter so when somebody wants to set up a vision for themselves the question they want to ask themselves is what kind of man do i want to become that's a question what kind of woman do i want to become 
because you see you must understand that um, the impact you to achieve on earth has to be acculturated from inside of yourself all right because if you do not acculturate it on the inside you cannot produce it on the outside is the way it works you have never look let me let me analyze this for you japan doesn't have any natural resource anyway i mean um earlier in the 80s the japanese people will come around and then they'll be picking aluminiums from developing countries and we're laughing at them and all of that they didn't have iron ore and they picked up all of these scraps from all over the world and then they were able to form strategic uh, deposits of all of these things. It was strategic again around their country. And then what you realize is that in a short few years, Japanese were giving us our very best cars, from Hondas to Toyotas and what have you. And people were wondering, wow, that's, <laughs> that's impressive. And then all of us, I mean, look at us in this country. We have an incredible commercial quality of iron ore and all the other strategic mineral resources that are required to drive the economy of any nation forward. But because it is on the earth, we don't even know how to transform our world. Japanese recognize that we may not have it in the ground, but we have it here. And so the pyramid of Japan said uh, during the 60th anniversary of the Hiroshima bombing, he made a speech that said, if the world plans to ja bomb Japan again, you guys just give us notice that we'll move on the Japanese away. You can blow the place up if you want. Then we'll come back. And in 20 years, we'll be back where we are. Why? Because the wealth of Japan is not in the ground. It's not on the earth. It's in the people. It's in the world, the internal world. So it doesn't matter that you are in a situation like Nigeria. You can grow. I mean, I mean the same Nigeria where it's not working for some people. The same Nigeria where people are in extreme poverty situations. Uh, in the, the same place, you see some people are growing in leaps and bounds, closing deals, getting international support. They are bringing in grants, and then they are getting seed funding in hundreds of millions of dollars. And then they are doing tremendous amount of work, especially in the tech space, in the cryptocurrency space, in the uh, fintech spaces, and all of all this kind of things. And then you're wondering, what is really going on? It is not the same earth. It is, I mean, the same earth is not the same world. So people have to come to the place where they recognize that. So guys, the real secret, the masterful growth this year is a focusing on your growth as a strategic outcome for all of the other things that you are seeking to achieve. Is it opportunity that will come into your life that will be useless if you have not built the capacity to occupy those roles? And all you need to build the capacity is learning how to leverage time to become everything that you really want to be. And that's the truth of the matter. All right. Um, I know that at some point we are going to have a conversation around this, and I'm really looking forward to taking some of your questions. Uh, I'm looking at time. I don't know how much time we have here. But the, the truth of the matter is that uh, as I take your questions and I respond, and I want you to feel free to ask those questions, you can post them on the uh, group or uh, put them, or you can unmute. I think everybody can unmute now. And all of that. But you must understand that if you are going to grow, you have to learn certain disciplines. Now, let me tell you something about personal spaces. Um, if I set a goal for personal growth, I will set a goal that sounds like building my personal space into a morphic field. For those of you who are familiar with the science, the biology of it, you know, when we refer to a field as a morphic field, it means that anything that comes into that field is impacted powerfully by the field to the point that it significantly changes the internal structure of that other visited material, and then it conforms it to the prevailing structure in the place you're coming to. It's called a morphic field. I'll give you a biblical illusion here. But the time that uh, a King Saul was chasing David and he chased him into a morphic field of prophets. <laughs> as soon as he stepped into that place, what happened was that he was wrapped up by the energy in that place. And suddenly a king began became a prophet suddenly. And then he began to prophesy. And then while he was prophesying, people said, is, is, is Paul also among the prophets? And then they were wondering. He stepped into a morphic field. You see, what we need in our nation today are incredibly powerful people 
with strong morphic fields that when people come into your space, it's like they're swallowed up in your vortex. And then you begin to impact and change. You see, let me say this very quickly because it's all part of vision. That those of you who want to be leaders, and I need to, I need to stress this, the most powerful component of leadership is vision. The most powerful ahead of anything else. Now, when as a leader, you have a vision of what you want to achieve. Now, here is where it becomes interesting. You must realize that the energy from that vision must flow from the inside. That's why leadership is not about the title you hold, the chair you occupy, the position you feel. It's about the power you exude. Now, I'll give an example. I, I found myself having to work with a group of young people at some point some years ago. And these young people were rough, they were ras, they were total street. They, they don't talk like you know, I'm familiar with. And um, they, they lived consciously in an environment that was reinforcing the basest parts of their lives. And then you look at them and then you'll be like, wow, <laughs> is there any hope for this one? Now, as a leader who has come into that space, the temptation would be rebuke them, talk to them, challenge them. And I realized that is not going to work. Because you see, when you rebuke somebody, you uh, or you are challenging how they behave or how they dress and all of that, you are trying to achieve a, what they call tokenism. You know, you know what tokenism is uh, from the word token. Uh, it means that somebody is going to put out some kind of external assemblage of change that is only skin deep just so that they can get in good terms with you. And so they may change the way they look. They may, okay, somebody's asking, arrange program of events, but it's not restricting. You can have as long as you know. Okay, okay, somebody's, you know. So, do you understand what I'm saying? That they can change the way that they look. They can change the way that they dress. They change the way that they hair, uh, the hair is. And then somebody was like, hey, now he has changed. He didn't change her. He only changed his garment. The person is still the same on the inside. Why? Because vision is the most powerful form of change. You see, if a man has not altered his internal vision of himself, nothing on the outside can permanently change. Not, I mean, an agbero will remain an agbero even if you get him new clothes and you make him look nice and take some pictures. It's called tokenism. Because in the end, he will most likely relapse into what the familiar because that's what he's used to all his life. His entire mental frame is been structured around all of those habits and behaviors. He is in a very different morphic field internally. And so as a result, anything you try to do on the external is not going to work. So what really needs to work is that leaders need to evolve. Oh, this is powerful. I, I don't know how else to explain this. Leaders need to evolve into powerful morphic fields. So that when people step into your vortex, into your arena, into your space, come into your presence, there is something that starts to shift even before you even start to talk. Now, this is the effect I think that some PR people are trying to achieve, uh, which is part of the reason why you see there's a whole lot of work that goes into what is called perception and management and personal branding. And so they're trying to create an artificial effect of the Moffitt field. So that when you come into the presence of a celebrity or a renowned person, you feel different. You they, they look glorified to you. Uh, and that's because they have done a lot of media glorification. So that by the time that those people come into your space, you will you carry on. You know, that's that uh psychological suggestion that you have been given through all the media barrage is now playing out. You look at this person with awe until maybe you have an opportunity to stay with them for five minutes, 10 minutes or longer. And then just like Moses coming out of the cell of Mount Sinai, the veil, the glory of the veil starts to wither away and disappear. And then you now see the man behind the myth. The real person shows up and they're not as glorious as they, as they have made you believe. That's false. That's what the world does. That's what people do out there. 
So it's, it's all personality epic. There is no depth in all of that. People pay billions of dollars around the world just to manage perception and do image branding. And the whole idea of image branding is that the image, the, the person, the substance does not exist, but we have to create a perception of substance. And that is what PR really is doing. That's why they will create this perception of substance and send you a presidential candidate. And then you buy it only to realize that you have traded your souls at the price of shadows. Why? Because that's the power of PR. And that is the reason why we don't do well in leadership in this part, because we are now focused on substance and the traumatic field. So when a real leader grows, now what you find is that because of his internal growth, his depth, his substance and all of that, when he steps into an environment, even if you stay within two hours, you can't get enough of it. Have you wondered why sometimes your celebrities have bouncers around them, security and bodyguards. It's not always because they think you, the fan, are coming to help them. It's because it's a strategy for keeping the illusion going. Because it is assumed that close proximity will diminish relevance. And so when you see your, your celeb or your favorite artist too much, that is something that is lost because of the too much access that has been given to you and so they try to cut it down right to a minimum right so you get to see for five seconds five minutes you see the same effect in their videos now for those of you who watch a lot of music videos i want you to go and check this you will notice that in the music video the video camera never focuses on the select for more than two or three seconds at a time all right it's almost moving the the, the, the speed of the storyboard of that video is incredible stuff that you don't get a chance to see more than twice in the video. I mean, more than two seconds. And then it just keeps going. And then they show all different angles. You don't get to see the full person because they don't want you to have that. It's called the tantalizing effect. Not having enough, always being in a position of wanting more and more and more is how the world manages their own form of leadership. And it's also the reason why these things will collapse over time. Because the true measure of a leader, and like I used to tell folks, is leadership is not the external show of force. It's a quality of the spirit. It is growth that have been so concentrated that it creates a morphic field around you. And like I was telling you about the boys around me. So I realized that these boys are going to change, then I have to grow. Can you imagine that? <laughs> Meaning that their change is actually tied to my growth. So if I grow, and expand and I model the right behavior and I let the graces of what I carry to permeate the environment where I am. I will bring them into my morphic field and before you know what is happening, they will start to observe the very elements of my environment. And before you realize what's happening, I have moved them from the earth into my world. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm happy to report to you that all of those boys are some are pastors. <laughs> now, some uh, AOPs on radio, <laughs> they are doing all kinds of incredible things. <clears throat> and people look at you and say, wow, incredible influence on these kids. They think it is about what I'm saying. No, it, what I'm saying is only 50% of it. If I less than 50%, maybe even 35, 40. The bulk of it is having an incredible vortex around which when people step into it, they start to change without even knowing they're changing. They grow without even realizing how much growth they achieve, only to come out and step out maybe after a while into their usual or their former spaces, and they realize they don't fit in anymore. Why? Because they have been wrapped up in a new market field that is altering their entire perception of things and their vision of what is to come. This is how growth happens. And when this becomes your vision, what happens is you want to grow into becoming the kind of person who anyone who encounters you wants to have you again, all right? So if you do a project for them, if you manage a product, if you manage a contract, that's repeat business. Everybody just wants you back because it's not just that you've done the work well, it is the environment that you leave behind after the work is done. There is something about it. People just can't understand it. It's powerful. It's growth. So back to where I started. Growth is always about what you want to become. The kind of person that everybody wants to listen to. I used to tell people, 
become the kind of leader that you would like to follow. <laughs> hey, I know who you are right now. Are you the kind of leader you would like to follow? Yeah. If you're not, then you have a vision cut out for you. You want to evolve into becoming someone that is truly fascinating. That has to be your vision going forward. And to get that done, on a daily basis, you need to learn how to organize your thought as a rule, how to have rituals. Rituals is so powerful. Um, you can look at 2022 right now and understand that 2022 is not going to be different from 2021, 2022, or even 1999. It's just a accumulation of dates, for God's sake. The only thing that will make it different is a ritual you choose to start today. All right? Because that ritual, as you start it today, the implication would be that it is start to evolve you into a whole new person. And then you come to realize that I am changing. Something is happening to me. And that's a beautiful thing. So do you understand what I'm trying to say? Now, that change that is happening on the inside of you starts to provoke results on the outside. Now, allow me to use another biblical illusion. You know, there are all kinds of principles of scripture, <laughs> if you don't mind. Um, there was a time Esau, very angry, he said he was going to kill his brother, Jacob. And um, he came out with 400 men that drew the sword. They were all going out there in battle formation to take out Jacob and whatever he thinks is God. Jacob realizing that he's not match for the brutality of his stronger brother. He realized, but he does have another path that is much stronger too. So he was left alone and then he processed his situation in prayer alone. And then when he stayed in that place, he locked his name there. He was not going to have known for an action. He doesn't, he didn't care if you were an angel or anything. He was gonna hold you hostage until he got what he really wanted. And so what happened was he got it. He got blessed. And there was internal change that happened within Jacob. His name was changed. And then he went to meet Esau. What will happen? Now, when he met Esau, I mean, this is so fun. <laughs> this is incredible. When he met Esau, this was somebody who was already out for a war with 400 men. But as soon as Esau saw Jacob, the mother's hate he was feeling immediately switched into the tender embraces of brotherhood. Why? Now, there are those who are looking at that commentary and they'll be like, oh, Esau changed. Esau did not change, sir. <laughs> it was Jacob who changed. Jacob moved from Jacob to Israel. Something fundamental, something absolutely profound has changed inside of Jacob so that everything outside of Jacob responded to the change, including Esau. So Esau was responding to the change that was happening to Jacob. So rather than fight him, no. Because when a man's way starts to please God, even his enemies feel peace with him. So many times we are deceived to think that the way to change our situation is to change something on the outside, change my spouse, change an office, change business, even change countries or whatever. But what really needs to change is you. You need to evolve because the more you evolve, the more some things in the lower region drops out of your life. And then you are able to soar into a whole new region where you attract whole new goods and toys and gifts and results. That chain is the hand. So if that becomes your vision, that by the end of 2022, these are the things I want to become, then the real thing is how do I grow into it? And the one way to do that is to maintain daily rituals. Oh, rituals. Please, I, I choose these words carefully, uh, especially because it's become very sensitive these days in the country. But I choose it to mean it has felt intentional practice happen every day. If it is not intentional or heartfelt, then it is a routine, not a ritual. If you wake up every morning with a ritual, or some things that you have 
to do in small quantities every single day. The meditation, the reading of a chapter of a book, the opportunity to write out your thought in one paragraph only, small, small rituals, and you do them consistently for one month, two months, three months, I assure you, you will not stay the same person. Now, the reason why some people are unable to sustain those rituals is because they don't have clearly defined vision. There is no burden of who they want to become. They have not cut in there. It's, 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 it's incredible. He said, when you have seen that vision, as you have, you have imagined it in all of its particulars and details, and you have seen it in all of its beauty and glory and power, and you say, wow, this is the kind of person I really would like to become intellectually, spiritually, and in several other ways. Now, let your ritual become the daily goals that you have to achieve in your path towards this person. Now, guess what? As you start to transform and change, you'll start to attract very different outcomes in your life. There are people who have walked away from you who will start to walk back because now they can feel a whole new energy flowing through you. You're a whole new person. I mean, something has changed about you. And everybody wants a piece of that. And that's really very important. All right, so this is how you grow into that vision. So you've got a vision, you've clarified the vision, this is the kind of person I want to be. Guess what? All those other things that you desire, buying a car, getting that office set out, making 50 million at the end of the year, this other thing, those other things, we start to think because they are outcomes of the personality that you have built. Now some of you kind of have the jobs or contracts of, how will I call it now? Maybe say 20 million. You know why? Because the discipline to design proposal, the discipline to figure out the schematics of it, the discipline to do a time scale and build it around a work plan and involve flow chats around it and even have weekly schedules of activity. All of those things, you can do them. So you are not that kind of person yet. So if I make the mistake of giving you a contract like that, I'll regret it. Why? Because you see, the capacity required to fulfill it is not there. The desire is there, the capacity is not. So your vision, therefore, will become to grow into the person who have that capacity to stand in king's palaces. That's how they said it about the Dan. They said they had the ability, that's capacity, to stand in the palaces of kings. Some people have ambition, they have the capacity. So even if you give them those opportunities, you'll suddenly realize that they have not been processed to fill into those roles that you have just given them. So what you have done is that you have put them in a position where they are totally uncomfortable and they will fizzle because why? They are totally out of their debt. I've had guys who said, I want to be a CEO. I want to be on the wrong conglomerate. I want to do all sorts of things. Okay, that's nice. And I said, come with me. I'm, I'm going to attend a strategic meeting. It was strategic again. And then we've got in the meeting and uh, I make him sit at the back and then he hears so that he can listen into the conversations that I'm going up in the place. And then at the end of the meeting, I ask him, uh, what did you draw out of the session somewhere? <laughs> he says, I, I don't understand anything. <laughs> Nothing. I don't understand anything that they were talking about. Why? Because, number one, half the conversations were jargons, which means in our technical terms, all right, built around that industry. And let's say it's a finance industry. And so people are talking about, um, we're having a challenge with the fiscal policy placement of federal government material, and the exchange rates uh, of CBN is not helping. We're not able to put uh, credit in the, real, in the real economy because of the problem of uh, credit failure. So as a result, even the people who are looking to obtain credit from commercial banks are not able to do so because commercial banks fear that this credit could be deployed to take care of fiscal things that government budgeting was supposed to care about their not. And then we're having conversations like this, and then we are going, and then we are citing reports from World Economic Forum, we're looking at policy like that. So see, that, that capacity, that debt, they don't have it. They can't flow. If, I, if, you, if they get into that place, they can't even have, they can't make one sentence that will make sense. Why? Because the debt required for that space, it doesn't happen. So your problem is not absence of money. Your problem is you have not become the kind of person to whom that kind of money will come. Except, of course, you want to steal it. 
And then if you steal it, it will diminish. All right, you cannot multiply what you didn't grow. It's not possible. It's not going to happen. It's the reason why your politicians don't want to leave office because they cannot multiply even the money they stole. It's, it will never happen. The capacity to multiply anything in your head is called wealth. The capacity to accumulate things is called riches. So what we have is that we have a rich country. We don't have a wealthy country because we don't have the power to multiply. We have the power to accumulate. So when somebody gets into power, they accumulate and accumulate and accumulate. And so if you're bringing reforms that wants to cut off all the leakages from where they're accumulating from, they will send people after you and make it disappear. Why? Because you want to tough the accumulation. Is the reason why when they leave power or they get out of favor with their uh, political principles, they degenerate overnight very quickly because they really didn't have the capacity to multiply anything. And I tell somebody, the way you know that you are gifted or even anointed is your capacity to do the impossible with the available. That's just the thing. You don't need a lot. It's only a seed. Then all else you need is the grace for capacity and discipline to grow the seed leverage time and wait for harvest. That's how you grow anything. Anything outside that process is you wanted to steal or accumulate illegally and growth cannot happen. You will never be, that's why Nigeria can make hundreds, 200 billion dollars in revenue from oil or any other sources, but we can't grow it. And why can't we grow it? The capacity. We are not built to grow anything. We are built to accumulate. And that's where the problem is. You get a picture and so on and so forth. So if you want to grow, begin to grow into the kind of person who can be invited to kind of have conversations with kings, with presidents. And then when you're done with your conversation, you say, wow, this is, whoa, 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 this is incredible. <laughs> this, I mean, people just wanted to come back. So people say, oh, why is he so successful? Because he is successful. He, he, the person, the success is the person. It's not the cars or the house. All those are the outcomes of the success. The success is the person. So if you're not growing, so look at the vision of who you want to be. Stop describing success. Oh, he has 20 million. That's not success. Success is, oh, he's the kind of guy who can easily attract 20 million. That's success. So it doesn't matter where they throw you into, even to the desert, you attract it. <laughs> like, it, like, Isaac, you just keep growing wells, and then things are just happening. Why? Because the force for creation, the creatorial power that you command is coming from inside of you and reproducing on the outside. So except they take you out, they said they kill you, there's still where they can take out your success. They can sink your ship or burn your company, and all of that you will very easily recreate them because there is so much more from where that came from. So stop trying to be rich. Stop trying to be wealthy. That's a beautiful part of growth. Yeah, they, 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 they are the sound trust, and that's basically how this thing works. So I I really think that, uh, and this is a simple, um, and rounding off this session, uh, with what your questions, there is something that me and my team, we, we, we have, uh, we experimented an online version, and we are trying to push it out this year. Uh, we, we call it the Alice Modern Academy. What's that? You see all these things I'm teaching you guys? We have systematized it into a program that, you know, enables us to identify the real promising teenagers from high school. As this one, as a, as a top three in each of those classes, 27 in a school, and aggregate them around, you know, a region, and then put them through a program where they start to explore core skills and tech skills together. Why? Because it's time to start to grow people into something. Because this, you see, you have this culture among young people out there where they just imagine that if they steal or scam or do something, they're making it, they're not making it, they're not bullying. You understand what I'm trying to say? You are boiling because you can't, you see, if, if you blow up, you can't stay up. To stay up, you have to grow up. That's the way it is. I want to blow. Mm -hmm. You blow in pieces. Okay, because in the end, all these guys are around wanting to blow. What was the final outcome? They become like donuts, robust on the outside, vacant on the inside. But we are trying to build solid gold. All these smart young people, this year alone, we're going to have 2,700 of all those young people because we're just sitting with the 100 schools that are coming to the program this year. From next year, we're going to run into thousands. And, and that's because you, you imagine a smarter nation. We call them smarters, by, uh, by the way. All right, these are smart people. Smarter is from the term Spartan, for those who have seen the movie 300. So we groom them with the same level of 
uh, ruthlessness that Spartan soldiers would raised. All right, you you groom them, you make sure that there is no wrong. I mean, they, they clarify the next 10 years of their life in spite of all the technology inflection that can change the trajectory of your career plan. But at least you have a man map, a mind map of where it thinks that you want to go. I mean, I'm talking about 14 year old, 15 year old, 16 year old, young, smart Nigerian kids. We experimented this social, I mean, virtually in the last two years, and it is incredible what we saw. Imagine what is possible. I will put all of this out. So that you now have a new generation of people who actually have a vision of personal growth, a vision of evolving into individuals with morphic fields that can change whole communities. You want to change Nigeria? Transform the generation and put them in a place where personal growth becomes the only thing that they really care about. And that is it. The other thing I'm saying, it's a beautiful work. And I thank God for the opportunity that we are able to get this off the ground and get going. And I see hope. I see hope everywhere. I want to thank you guys for listening to me. Thank you so much. I've taken quite some time. Uh, maybe we can take a couple, a few minutes and uh, see if there may be one or two questions you guys want to um, uh, ask. And then we'll be happy to take those questions. Thank you for having me uh, come from. God bless you all. Thank you so much, sir, for that um, session. It was it was impactful and filled with a lot of nuggets. Now, this is the time for us to ask our questions. You can ask um, by unmuting your mic, or you can just send it in the chat um, box below. Um, please, let's ask our questions now. Let's not miss, let's not miss this opportunity to learn a lot more from um, our guest speaker. Okay, waiting for questions. If you have a question, please unmute your mic and um, ask. Or you can send it in the chat box. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, this is Joseph in Saka. Hello? Yes, yes I can hear you. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. This is Joseph Nsaka from um, Benin City, Edo State, Nigeria. It's um, such a privilege and an honor to... In fact, I was just so lucky. I just saw the flyer again early this morning, just a few minutes to 10. And I was like, wow. And quickly did all the, I had to do to make sure I was in the mm -hmm. session. And thank God I didn't regret it. Yes, um, I've been following John Abali. Thank you so much for this awesome privilege to hear you again this morning. I've been fired up and inspired. Yeah, my question goes thus. Uh, it's, it's, um, I, I, okay, start, I want to take the statement you made that if you blow up, you are going to um, become nothing at the end of the days like a donut. And uh, you made so much emphasis on the rituals. Um, I wanted to ask a personal question to him, uh, Mr. John. What would you say are your core values? That is number one. And please, can you let us into your private life on what exactly are the rituals you have been um, um, having or doing throughout the years that has made you who you are today? And what would you have done better if you had known better years ago so that we can begin to make the necessary adjustment for us to be the kind of person that will attract whatever we desire in life? Thank you. I hope you understand my question. I, do. I think done. I'm going to take your question. I think the question is a group. Um, the answers you are seeking require me to send you an invoice. <laughs> I'll take a few more of those so just take them in blocks of three good morning good morning good morning Hi, good morning we can hear you yeah this is um during speaking from Lagos Nigeria um this has been a, a very insightful 
um, teaching. But the question I have is, uh, you spoke about doing daily rituals. Yeah, and, and I, I strongly believe that it's a, it will be very helpful. But then I want to know for a person that is looking to become um, a leader in the renewable energy space, what what do you advise? What what daily rituals do you advise um, such a person to do? I hope you got my question. Sorry. Yes, I did. Thank you. Can we take one more? And, uh, yes. Thank you, sir. Can we take one more in the middle there? All, all right. Um, maybe Hello, I should. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. One more, please. I just remembered something. And uh, Joseph, once again. Yes. I. I. You talked about um, this um, program you have for st students, matans. And uh, yeah. I. I don't know if anything like that is happening around me, and how one can be a part of it, because I'm really, really interested. This issue of Yahoo taking over the minds of young people even from age 12, is becoming too disturbing. And the truth about it is that these children don't have an alternative um, thought pattern or role model or, or route that they can take in life. It's just like it's, this is the only way to make it in life. So I would really have to, would love to be a part of it to see how we can spread the, the vision around my environment. So thank you very much. I'm done. All right. Um, thank you. I think um, let me just address this cluster of three and maybe after this, if we still have any further questions. Uh, I acknowledge that um, Dr. Abraham Awushani has joined us, um, a fantastic gentleman from Government University. Good to have you here, sir. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> um, so, I think I'll start with uh, Deering because he asked the question. So Deering, you asked that you are into renewable energy and then you want to know what uh, rituals you can do there. Now, I will tell you, I, I, I mentor some young people across sectors, some sectors, and that is something that um, I give them to do. My mentoring sessions are usually quite uh, ruthless, <laughs> especially when they are one-on-one. -on -one. There's something we call the GI code. Um, are you there, Adirin? I want to be sure that you're listening. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm listening. I'm uh, there's listening. something we call the GI code. Um, I would identify a minimum of over 60 global issues. That's what GI means, global issues. And uh, we derive all those global issues from a, a compilation of all the trends and risk report that the World Economic Forum has been generating since 2015, 2016, 2017, all the way to 2020. And then we identify all the global risk and trend issues. Now, the, the thing here is this. A, a lot of people do not know that many times the solution appears before the problem. But the reason why we miss it is because we are not paying attention usually before a problem comes the solution has preceded it it's just like writing an exam before you get to write the exam you have been given the solution in class by way of teaching all right so the whole idea of the exam is to now solve a problem or apply the solution to the problem that you are now being given do, 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 do you understand what i'm trying to say and that's what the point is now <clears throat> okay so so the, the the thing that need us to understand is that if you look at a lot of the reports that have come out of one economic forum uh i, I read a lot of these uh, reports particularly declassified materials see there are materials that were classified some 20 30 years ago and uh, for some reason the department of defense or NASA or whichever other relevant agency just decided to classify it and they put it out there. And especially if you go to the website of uh, uh, um, international relations, 
foreign international foreign relations and then you discover that all this classified material have incredible soft secrets that go from because the way america works is that they have all these patterns in bef- sometimes 20 30 years before the market matures for this product to hit the place so many of the things that you're seeing coming in were not just fly by night ideas that have come out. Some of them are ideas that people have patented some 20, 30 years ago, but you know they're waiting to grow the market. Sometimes they even have to create the market. That's a whole new conversation altogether. Uh, you understand? Because America doesn't just run the world by mistake. They are absolutely they are the most strategic nation on earth. Is it if you go to the international studies and there's a part of studies that call strategic studies? Um, look, I, <laughs> maybe I'm loading too much here. So, <laughs> so the, the point I'm trying to say is this um, the GI codes, all right, the GI codes I just talked about allows us to cluster them into, to group them into clusters. So we have GI code clusters that fit into renewable energy. So my mentees who are into renewable energy or just plain energy, oil and gas, and they are all looking at that, they, they have the role of identifying on a weekly basis, if you like, of course, they do some of these things on a daily basis, all the things from news item to new development to new management of the big tech, of the big companies within that space and all of that, everything in the news in that area, do you understand what I'm trying to say? And you are building a knowledge base around that on a daily basis. That's where your ritual comes in. So if you are doing this for only 10 minutes a day, maybe before you hit the road, and then you just go to Google and then type your GI code there, go to news, and then look at all the materials you've got there, and then you follow on with the reading and with the trend. Before you realize what's going on, you are gradually accumulating sufficient depths that eventually qualifies you to become a subject matter expert and the other thing i ask them to do is all of you start becoming subject matter expert on linkedin so go to linkedin publish some of these materials that you are gaining and it's, it's it's not copying and pasting this is you getting all this information about what's happening in that space and then forming an opinion an intelligent intellectual opinion about it and then putting it there three four paragraphs nothing too much all right, on a weekly basis. Yeah. So before you know what is going on, you are building that. The first opportunity you get, either to represent your company or to be in a renewable energy meeting or whatever, and a similar sub- conversation is had, and then you have to raise your hand to make a contribution to say that, okay. And then you're able to cite two, three examples that are unknown to others. Look, dominion is pretty simple. When you know what others do not know, you command the attention with that campaign. Is how it works. All right, and so it will come to you, you get to it. So when you sustain rituals like that, it repositions you in that place because you are building you to become the go-to guy in the renewable energy sector. Because when it comes to some of the integral details and intimate details, I might even like to say, that some people are looking forward to, most people don't even have them. But if there is a gentleman that everybody can come to and know that this guy has a working knowledge of the nitty gritties, and that's what it means to be an expert. So long and short, an expert is somebody who knows more and more about less and less. And that's how it works. All right? So that's what I can offer you now for free. Anything else requires an invoice. <laughs> Thank you. Um, sir, before, Thank you very much. That was very helpful. Yeah. Sorry, sir. So, um, the, the, there are a couple more questions in the chat box. So I was just going to cut in before you continue. Um, j- just This is just for everyone. We, we have a feedback form. Um, that we would need everyone to feel. So while, while we're taking um, the questions, I want taking any other questions. Please just in the chat box, I have just I have dropped the feedback form. So please just fill that feedback form to register your participation and also to help us know what we can do to make this experience better. So sir, I'll just quickly read out the questions. Um, yeah. well, let me finish this cluster. Okay, and then okay, okay. No problem. Questions. No problem. Sir. Uh, no so problem. I don't mix the other now. Yes, please. Oh, okay. Thank you. Now, um, Brad Joseph. Uh, good to hear from you again. Uh, it is Johnson Napali, actually. <laughs> Johnson is an English name. John is a Hebrew name. All right. So, uh, <clears throat> uh, so you are asking me to share what I do personally. I mean, I have actually given an insight <laughs> from the kind of from the answers I've been trying to provide. Um, I know that I'm working with young people. I essentially 
have an apostolic calling to raise the next generation. So what this means is that I have to cut through all of the major dimensions from intellectual to spiritual to economic and, and all of that. So I build all this into blocks in my life and I make sure that my days are broken into each of these blocks where I develop each block on a daily basis. So um, it's, it's something that I do. So my ritual is by spiritual and then uh, intellectual and then it goes into other dimensions as well. Um, uh, again, that's because, you know, for those of you who are familiar with me, you know, I, I am the convener of the Danish community um, where you have these extraordinary people who love God and want to take over the seven mountains of influence. Uh, so all of that puts tremendous pressure for growth. And what I find has worked for me is that when I search the spiritual, it provides a base from which all the other things resolve themselves. Um, if I do not search the spiritual, it complicates all the others because the level of calmness required to navigate the labyrinth of information and data that is out there in the world, you cannot get it by any other form of discipline except from a spiritual space. So you, you've got to do that. All right? we, we call that space the Sebastianus of God. And so if, if, for instance, you wake up at 5 a.m. in the morning, your next one hour is to cultivate yourself into that divine morphic field, if you like, so that it is from the basis of that that you attack your day. And then you realize you're able to do far more than a regular guy because you're operating from a whole different dimension. All right. So there are certain times you find that even laws of nature bend in your favor. <laughs> and then you, I don't even ever caught to you, you have this 30 minutes to get ready for something. And then you do quite a lot. And only to come back to the clock, you realize that it's just 25 minutes more. And then you thought, this 30 minutes should have been over by now. And then you realize you still have a lot more time. And then you're wondering what happened. The time slow down. I have those, uh, those experiences a lot, a lot. And it's it's amazing how the, that has helped me. So that's basically what I can share with you as far as my own practice is concerned. All right. Uh, so you, there's a bulk of my rituals every single morning. And I get that done. I did that yesterday, yesterday, and so on and so forth. Now, uh, on the conversation around smartens, um, we are doing a Lagos pilot. Uh, in two years' time, we hope to roll out to other states in the country. All right, so uh, we're doing a Lagos pilot for now. So it is the consequence of the Lagos pilot that, from all of the things we gather from here, that we'll now do a rollout. Uh, maybe we can come to Benin next year, but definitely not this year but i do know that such uh ecosystem of smart teenagers are necessary because we need to counter the incredibly sour youth subculture that is completely messing up the future of this country some people don't seem to understand how bad things are right now 12 year olds 13 year olds trekking from uh 14 year olds trekking from worry to benin you ask them why are you trekking where are you going they want to call us now, how's Bozolua? I want to call you. All the way, I'm, I'm talking about a video I saw of a 14-year-old coming to Hosu in Edo State, walking all the way from Wari. Some of you are familiar with uh, the recent uh, ritual killings. 17-year-old, 15-year-old, 20-year-old, you know, have the temerity, the conscience to kill another human being and burn the head. And, and, and they say they pick the ideas from social media. It's terrible. So we have a mess. You see, the problem with education is that every misinvestment in education is not visible until a generation later. That is why we think all is well. All is not well. It is a generation later when you realize that you have an acute shortage of doctors, an acute shortage of engineers, an acute shortage of uh, the critical disciplines that drive an economy. Why? Because the kids didn't want to learn now. Everybody is cutting corners. Nobody's sitting down to read. And uh, uh, what was it called now? Even parents and school authorities are helping to cut corners and help people get away with certificates they cannot defend. What we are doing is that we are building a time bomb set in the future. It will explode. So this is us trying to intervene in that system. 
and try to harness some of those ones who have shown a lot of promise, give them tremendous levels of support, build into an ecosystem, and then use that to build a morphic field. Now you understand what I'm talking about, so that we can start to drive a new intellectual culture across our schools. So that kids are not just about exams anymore. They're about building intellectual capacity to dominate the future. And that cannot happen. It will continue the way we are doing. So uh, private organizations like ours are coming in. Uh, some of you are familiar with Success Tab that Mr. Kuyi Joy is involved with. Now that's an intervention, powerful intervention. All right? If you're not familiar, please, you can check it out. Visit uh, Google uh, Success Tab. You will see the incredible offerings that they have out there. You should visit those places, see what Success Tab is doing. And that can definitely come to Benin overnight. All right, that can happen. You can start to have that conversation and even become a dealer that helps them to get some of these very important tools across to young people in your region. All right, so that is it. Uh, and not Cora Bridget has asked about uh, how I run with this vision. I, I think I've explained that in the course of answering the other questions. I hope this has been useful. Uh, thank you very much. Let's see if we have uh, one or two more uh, in the comment session and then I call this a wrap. Chidi, over to you, please. Thank you so much, sir. Um, I think there's one more question, and I think we can wrap up at that point. Um, so this is from Peculiar Chinaza, and um, he or she, he says, I learned about growing capacity before going into the limelight. So I thought staying out and hiding to build was the solution. However, recently I have had a strong burden that will require I put myself out there I want to know what you think about this. Can building capacity be done simultaneously with growing visibility? All right, that's um, that's a good question. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Chinaza. Uh, Chinaza, please confirm. Uh, would that be a male or a female? Uh, Non-binary. <laughs> There's no way we start. You can unmute yourself and respond. Uh, is is she, it here? Yeah, yeah, I can see I can see her on the call. Okay, she's here. Okay, it's oh. so a she, right? Yes, it's a she, it's a she. Okay, thank you very much. I just want to uh, confirm. People so is the gender relevant? Uh, is it, there is a way that both genders address, uh, approach situations differently. Now, at the outset of anything, um, let me come to nature. At the outset of anything in nature, things grow in the darkness. When you plant a seed, it has to stay in the dark earth for as long as possible until the time for sprouting comes. Now, there is always a time to not be in the land, build capacity, before you show up. Why? It's simple. The principle is this. If you arrive too soon, you will arrive too small. There's some things that should not showcase prematurely. But what happens is that people deserve opportunity at every stage of their lives to have platforms to share what they have learned so far. Okay, this is why as people are growing, we encourage them to uh, volunteer because on that volunteering platform, you might be asked to, you know, mentor a cell of young people, do other things. So this provides the opportunity to be growing and learning and perfecting your skills and traits because it's building you to the place where you now know that I have had 5,000 hours of talking time in my belt, just the same way pilot measure uh, the experience by how many hours they have clocked. Okay. <laughs> Speakers also do the same thing. Okay, I've spoken for 5,000 hours and then that prepares me. Now, it's important that you have the substance before you hit a particular strategic market. Otherwise, here's where the problem is. The market does not forget. You know, it's like having a wound. Hmm? Having a wound. And even though the wound is healed, the scar it's a permanent, constant reminder of the mess you had some time ago. Now, <clears throat> imagine if you are invited to speak, I mean, to perform, let's say you're an artist, and then you just got that idea, you have not really worked on yourself, your capacity as a singer, your vocal, your vocal 
strength and all the other rudiments of music you've not really you don't have a handle in any of those but you know you have melody you can sing and then you keep making trouble i want big stage and then somebody gives you a big stage and then suddenly you get on that big stage and the sheer lighting of the place knocks you out and then when you see the light crack it suddenly dawns on you that i don't think i was ready for this and by the time it's okay it's a turn now sing the lack of composure, the lack of inner substance. There's something we call metal. The metal, that thing that is built within you, that comes with experience and grit, has not been built because experience is not there. All right. You now forget some of your lines, you're carried away, and then you miss the opportunity. Now, it will take a pure miracle for any other group to invite you to come and perform again, ever. I mean, this is who you've now gone back and then you have improved significantly. You have, I mean, all of those shortcomings, you have worked yourself on and all of that. And now you have really made good progress and then you're good. It will take a miracle. In fact, you have to take a God sense to say, you know what, let's give this guy another chance. Yeah, can... you, get, you get what I'm trying to say? Let's give this guy another chance. Otherwise, it's going to be hard. So that's why we tell people, build, take your time and keep building. Now, it's not like you come to a point where there is no need to continue to build. No, you never get to that point. But at least there is a threshold you have to hit. So the moment to get that threshold, then, you know, from here going forward, I can start to pull weight. You, you, you understand what I'm saying? So if you feel the need to gain visibility, and you believe that you have built sufficient capacity for the level of visibility you seek, by all means, please take opportunity because your visibility is tied to your profit. Truth. You understand what I'm saying? But if you think you still need to grow, then I would say that take advantage of all the opportunities to express yourself while you grow the right capacity to hit the right stage. The thing you should not do is do nothing. I don't think I'm ready enough. I don't think I'm prepared. No, I'm not good enough. No, I cannot go out. No, don't do that. We can have differences in the stages or who gives you a stage, but in terms of growth, you, your giftings are exercised by use. I mean, you've got to find opportunities to use them, no matter how small. Do you understand what I'm saying? Use the stages that are provided for you to do what you've got to do. These are the things that helps you build a relevant capacity for that big opening that you are hoping to take advantage of. So the, 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 the cancel is not for you not to move at all or not to show your face. Please show your face in places. But keep building. And there are some places you might even have to say, you know what, I won't push on this one yet because there's a place I need to get to. I myself, I know I need to get to so I can leverage this platform. So it's not about showing my face it's about showing my face in a way that nobody wants to forget it. I don't know if you understand what I'm trying to say. Uh, do you know there are people who have been on TV for hey. 10 years, 20 years, and you still can't recognize them when you see them on the street, especially those on NTA? Why? Why can't you recognize them? I mean, I did not on TV, I did not visible, I did not in the public space. They are there. But guy, capacity and platform is everything. Is it, there's a way you become so good that even the platform that is hosting you begin to feel inadequate to hold you still. They will tell you, well, we know that we're increasingly out of options as to how to keep you <laughs> this thing, but if you want to go, we can understand. Because you have grown the place. That's the kind of person you seek to become. Become the person that have grown all the opportunities around you so that people are always looking forward to give you more and more of those opportunities. But by all means, please, be visible according to your size. They say, life is in phases, men are in sizes, leave your size by time. Thank you. Thank you so very much, sir. It's been, it's been uh, an amazing time with you. And this has been uh, one of the best, one out of 30 minutes of, of my life, right? So, and, and I'm sure for a lot of a lot of others here 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 on the call too. Um, we really appreciate you for joining us today. We thank you so very much for all of your insights, the impact you 
you've, you, you, you've given to us and we we look to begin to implement these in our daily lives and our businesses and our careers um we have come to the end of the session but before we close finally well we have come to the closing um but to 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 close out this session for us i'd like to invite our convener he has not um he has not said anything on the call yet but he's been with us right from the beginning in the person of mr oluwa kwejo oluwa tose um he's he's pretty much the reason why, why why we're here today and it's his vision that has been driving this this program up until this point so we would like to have you on sir and you you know close this out for us thank you so much sir mm. all right thank you very much um, everybody it's great to be here um i want to say a very big thank you to mr johnson abali for that very 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 august um, outing this morning thank you so much for the insight shared i want to thank everybody over 45 participants that have been on this call from beginning some dropped out 40 standing right now thank you so much before you go we dropped in the feedback form we would like to hear your feedback one very important question the feedback was do you have a clear vision we want to help you out in this journey such that um, you able to build capacity and be able to become who god really really wants you to become um, I want to thank every everybody part of the planning committee, all of you that shared shared the links, those of you that posted it on your WhatsApp group, those of you that shared on your Facebook platforms, we are immensely grateful. Thank you so much for the moderator all the way from Amsterdam, Netherlands, uh, just a few time zone difference for making our time to, to moderate this session. Busola, we are grateful. Thank you for those participants that joined out of Nigeria, uh, those from Austria, those from Europe, and those from America, and um, a couple of wonderful people, wonderful people everywhere. We want to let you know that um, the CONFAP series continues the first Saturday in March. Uh, Chidi, can you look up that date for us? So we are yes. back here. The goal, is to to, the goal is to stay inspired. The goal is to continue to innovate. The goal is to be, do big things. And the goal is to ensure that um, we continue to transform ourselves to becoming who God has designed us to be. So, like I said, take another one minute, fill the feedback form. It will help us to curate your information, help us to get across to you as well. There are some certain information you're giving to us that will enable us to get across to you. Uh, Mr. Chidi, can you please share the link again to the, uh, to the feedback form? Somebody just mentioned they need the feedback form link again. Thank you very much. We're going to be around, like I said, first, first Saturday in the month of That's March. We're going to be here. Yeah, the 5th of March. Thank you very much. We're going to be here. 10 o'clock is the time. And we're just we're just going to try to stick to time as much as possible. Today, we're just uh, 15 minutes shy of the mark. But I know that 15 minutes was an additional for every one of us. I want to say that... Um, we're going to share the link. Uh, we're going to share the link to this uh, recording. We have a recording. In the next two hours, the link will be available on our uh, YouTube uh, platform. So those of you that feel the feedback form, provide your email. We're going to send the link so that you can join. Uh, we're going to ensure that the videos of all the session, uh, Mr. Joseph Bali spoke amazingly at Confab 12. Um, before the end of tomorrow, that session will be available on the YouTube channel as well. But this session will be available before uh, the end of two hours to three hours time. So give us till 4 p.m. today. That link will be sent and shared to every one of you. Once again, I want to say stay inspired. I want to say keep doing the things you need to do. And don't give up on life. Don't give up on God. Knowing that with God, all things are possible. Uh, there's nothing you cannot achieve. Just ensure you keep doing what you continue to do. Um, on, on behalf of me and every member of my team, I want to thank you all for being part of today's program. Most, important, most importantly, I want to say thank you to Mr. Johnson Abalia, our guest speaker, for making time to come in and inspire us today. God bless you. Um, Confab 13, our annual conference, is coming up on in July, uh, the last Saturday in July. So we, we're building capacity towards that event. I think that's July 26th or July 30th, one of them. 
uh, Chidi Ebe confirmed that date. We have building capacitors that conference and we're having a very 500 st strong delegation to be at that meeting and you don't want to miss it. Once again, thank you very much for coming. I'm going to hand over to uh, Chidi, but once again, Mr. Bali, thanks for being a blessing today and God bless you. Chidi. Thank you so much, sir. Um, <clears throat> thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you, Mr. Johnson Abali. Thank you uh, to our moderator and thank you to our convener. Um, this, we have come to the end of this session and we're just going to say a word of prayer before we all, before we, before we close out. Um, dear Lord, we thank you for the privilege to sit at your feet and learn. Um, we have heard that, um, um, from vessels that you have used to speak to us. Um, these are human beings, but we know that they are speaking through you. I mean, you, you are speaking through them and they are, they are bringing the words directly from you. Father, we pray that um, the grace to begin to apply these in our lives and to begin to see the results of these applications you grant unto us in Jesus' name. And as we disperse now, we pray that your grace will be with us and you help us to um, go about our daily lives, becoming better versions of ourselves constantly. Thank you, Father, for in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Thank Amen. you all very so you much for being a part of this. Yeah, yes, everyone, everyone can, can unmute. Um, and, um, you know, so we can just say hello to one another before we end up the call. Thank you all for being a part of today's session. And we look forward to seeing you all next month. Yeah, thank you very much. Peculiar, I can see you on the call. Abimi Fuluwa, uh, Mustafa, thank you for coming. Uh, Dr. Thank Abraham Mungosheni, I'm grateful that you're part of, part of this. Uh, Mimi Fort, uh, Dereen, thank you for... Uh, Mr. Joseph Nsaka, all the way from Australia, thank you very much. Julius Kelvin, Kima, uh, we have Nusawa Sato, Obuntola, Omotola, Oluwa Shegun, Peculiar, thank you so much. Prominence, promise, yes, we meet again here. Thank you so much for being here. Me, uh, Serena, yeah, we're glad you came. Shadi Lizzy, we are we're, we're grateful you came as Stanley Ugo and uh, Mr. Ochena and uh, Mr. Victor and uh, Mr. Uche. We're glad you all came. I hope you enjoyed the session. God bless you. Have a wonderful Saturday afternoon. Shidi. Thank you so much for putting this together. God bless you. Thank you. <laughs>